Joel here today with the Heads Up campaign to kick off a conversation about mental health. Uh, William, do you want to go first? First. Delicately done. All right, just game before. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. How are you today? Um, no, I'm good today. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm happy. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm glad that the, the Heads Up stuff's going well. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you guys are here today, really, you know, great news. So, um, anyone want to go any deeper? I've been out for two months. I first came back last week, so I'm happy. My kids are healthy. And obviously, it's a huge honor to be invited here with royalty. And then the juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy. <laughs> oh. I think, obviously, that, that brick there is very, uh, that question's very broad. We say it every day, and like, as you say, generally, do we mean it? Do we actually care how that person is, or is it a throwaway comment? I think with this campaign, there's a lot of things that will probably be said in this conversation that can be taken into day-to-day -day life. And um, no, it's, it's a very good question. Like, how are you today? How was you yesterday? What's going on in your life? These are kind of things that people need to be able to talk about, but more importantly, feel that they've got the confidence of friends or people in, like us. We're all from different backgrounds, but have a common understanding. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's more like that question, like taking an interest in like actually how somebody is and like wanting to take an interest in their life and seeing how they're getting on as well. Because it goes a long way. It goes a lot further than like what you think if somebody genuinely looks like they care and, and you want to speak to somebody as well. Talking always, I believe, half the problem. So it's a good question. Ready to go again? You're up, mate. Ready to go again? Big pressure. One hand. One hand. <laughs> <laughs> Rules, I like that. We've got the police Long arms. Um, when are you most happy? I feel like for me that question would have changed over the years. Um, where I am now, 37, father of five, I kid you not, I'm most happy when my house is as noisy as hell. I was most happiest when I was on the football pitch, being so proud to represent your country. But then when you come to a different part of your life, um, retirement and then you have children that's when I'm most happiest when I see smiles on their faces yeah your life just changes and the whole new perspective comes when you have children for me my kids and my family it's you know at times my children drive me insane and no sleep <laughs> but I love them dearly and you know you're most happy when they're all around and, and, and I think health is another thing as well I, I, you know we're talking about mental health but but health is so important I think we we take it for granted a lot of times, and, and you guys will know more than I do about injuries and all sort of mm -hmm. stuff, but I think when you know, a loved one or, or yourself is not feeling that good, whether it's you know, you're ill or you're injured, I think that can play a big part of, of whether you can get through the days and, and, and look to hopeful to the future. You want me to go? Yeah, this, could, yeah. this could go anywhere, I apologise. No, oh, oh, oh. Go for an edge. There we go. I'm more of a monopoly man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a question to pick up. How has the season going so far for you and your team? <laughs> Brilliant. Our season's been very difficult. Um, personally, obviously being injured and being out for four months and coming back to a team that's in a, the relegation zone obviously has not been ideal. But um, yeah, I've been picking up of late and naturally to score against Villa was, was a good <laughs> situation for me. And against us. <laughs> so, yeah. Saw it. And against us. Yeah, so no, it's been good. Yeah, you got it. I got that, yeah. Yeah, you might have two with her. Uh, 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 I'll shake your hand there as well. I ain't gonna lie, it's a very technical line. I'm more of just a hustle and bustle. Right How does football make you feel? I think sport for me has always been a big thing. I've, I've loved it. Anything physical, you know, challenging situations mm -hmm. like that, I, I relish and I, and I really enjoy it. And also, it's where I'm part of a team. Yeah. Because a lot of what I do is I'm, I'm out on my own a lot of time and yeah. you have to lead a room, lead yeah. an event. And actually, when you're on a pitch, you know, it takes 11 people to, yeah, cool. to win yeah. it. So I, I feel very much, as long as I've just got to look after my corner of the pitch, usually the tiniest small <laughs> corner, <laughs> the corner flag is a defender. But, um, you know, that's, that's my, my, my little territory. And, and I kind of just going to guard it, look after it and, and try and effectively win it for the team. And I, I like that. I like that camaraderie. I, I, I miss the... The coming away from the end of the game and, and you've been up in a basically a, a battle. For me it was confidence, it made me feel confident. I was quite a shy and reserved person off the pitch, um, low self-esteem but when I stepped across that white line I was Kelly Smith the footballer. Um, I wanted the ball at my feet, I wanted to help my team win. Um, I was kind of like the go-to player that I loved, loved that and when I was off the pitch I was kind of like really Preserved, so it just brought me so much confidence on the pitch, and I love that. I'm, I'm a gym guy when I get stressed. No, no you? No way, you're not a gym guy. Here's the thing, right? <laughs> when I get stressed, it's I, for me, it's that me time, and I, I go to the gym, and 
that's me headphones, workout, have a little sweat, and then afterwards it's like exactly you prioritize and be like, you know what? Sometimes things ain't as bad or ain't as good. So then that's literally you come out and be like, you know what? It is what it is, and that's it. It's just finding out what kind of works for you. Go on, you go. Yeah. yeah. Ah! No, you're right. What is your perception of mental health within the football community? Well, I think in past years it was a perceived weakness. Yeah. If you said, oh, I'm struggling a bit mentally, oh, he's not up for it, he's yeah. not up for the fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that would kind of be the perceived way where I think now, um, with so many people speaking on the subject, people go, oh, actually, there's, we know, we can see the It's uh, having that visibility, effects. isn't it? Yeah. So a high-profile player comes out and speaks about their problems and then those uh, people that aren't in the public domain, they look up to that person and say, well, if they've got that problem, then I can speak about it too. It, it really helps when those kind of figures go, come out. To go back to your question, the manager called me into his office a few months ago. He just asked me, how are you feeling? How are you doing? At the time, I was out of the team. I was playing poorly. He could see in training I wasn't my usual self. He just basically said, how are you feeling? I, I was honest with him. I said, listen, Gaff, I'm struggling at the minute. I'm trying really hard, but it's really getting to me. He just basically said, Andros, we believe in you. I've believed in you for many years, and I know that eventually you're going to get out of this state you're in. And then for me, that was literally like the best thing I could have yeah. been told at that time. Yeah. The next game, I came on and scored, and I was back in the team within a few weeks. So I think something That's so little, yeah, something so little yeah. as, a, as a five minute conversation goes a long way. Goes a long way. A long way. A long way. No, no pressure. Yeah. How would you kick off a conversation about mental health? So I'm in a position where it's affected me personally. Um, through, uh, in an 18 month spell, I lost my, my grandma, my granddad, and my dad in an 18 month spell. So five people that raised me, three literally went straight out the window. Where uh, I turned to alcohol as a, as a comfort. So if I could look back on my older self, uh, as I say, everything's a blessing because you've been through it, lived through it, and learned, learned what to do now. But I think you know people's characteristics in and around you. So I tend to, for example, my brother's in, in a bit of a bad space at the minute. So I saw him the other day. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Talk to me. Let's, let's get, get it out because I'm from a community where we don't speak or talk about our problems. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the thing that we, we do. We talk about it and I think you have to identify who's around you and be, be brave enough to speak about it because it is, everyone's going through problems. We all have different lifestyles, different backgrounds. You've got problems, I've got problems. Someone down the street now is going through some of it as well. So if we know those people or we can see there's something changing, then we have to just ask the question and hope that they can uh, start talking. It may just be just a conversation just to, to get things off your chest. Mm -hmm. I think if you keep bottling things up, it eats away at you. We've got to not make out like it's a taboo subject to talk about. So you know, even when you say, oh, it's mental health, and it be like, oh, I don't want to be going on like I'm, I'm with that stigma. It's literally the more normal our conversations have about it, the more people be opening up. And that's what it is. But how are you feeling? I like to also people to just be able to share stuff that really matters because that is what this is about. It's about, it's not about making it into, like you say, a big deal. Yeah. You know, mental health is, it's, it's, it's all, we all have mental health. It's all there. But it's about just trying to understand somebody and understand what they've been through. Part of this is all about just being more open about how we feel and just being able to talk about those those feelings and, and everyone not so shy away. So I think we're quite modest in this in this country as well. I think we don't want to we don't want to delve, we don't want to yeah, upset, yeah. Mm -hmm. we don't want to yeah, offend yeah. anyone. So therefore, we don't really ask. Yeah. And actually, we've got to be a bit more punchy and say, you know, okay, yeah. how are you doing? All right? Can you do, you do you want to talk a bit more about that? You should do the last, so one. Do the last one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one I take. Any of them? You wanted to fall over though. That was gone. That's not gone.